What up, Fight World? It's your boy Ego, and I'm back with some more boxing. Now, I had to make this video. So, the American heavyweight champ, Deontay Wilder, it looks like he's going to have his second title defense. Who is he going to be facing? It is being said that he's going to be fighting a Frenchman named Johan Duhapas. Now, the first problem is, I don't even know who the hell that is, right? Like, it's not a name that just rings bells, if you will. So, the first fight with Eric Molina, I actually knew who Molina was. 80% knockout ratio. I was like, cool, it's your first title defense. You beat Bermain Stavern in January. You're staying busy by fighting another puncher who at least been in there with Chris Ariola. Cool. I didn't have no problem with that. But this fight, to me, doesn't make any sense. Like, what is this? What does this do for Deontay Wilder? Now, I did a video about Peter Quillen. Peter Quillen's fighting some Chip and Dale, Magic Mike, Double XL looking motherfucker. And Deontay Wilder will be facing Johan Duhapis. Now, like, again, to me, I'm all about the meaningful fight. Again, I understand. I'm realistic. So I understand if a fighter needs a tune up or a easy fight after a difficult fight, something like that. But the Eric Molina fight, not that it was the easiest on paper, it was your light touch. So I feel like Deontay Wilder, there's other options for him. I would love to see Andy Ruiz, a guy like Amir Mansoor, Shannon Briggs, and some of these guys like Briggs, I know he has a fight coming up, but before it was a negotiated that he had that fight, they could have probably made this. There was a whole altercation in New York when Deontay Wilder and Briggs were cussing each other out, and Briggs was like, let's go champ. If you went around butt naked, nobody would know you. Let's go champ. Like, you know what I'm saying? He's doing all this and they were going back and forth. So again, there was a point where some of these fights could have been made. You know what I mean? Even the guy who I thought beat Chris Ariola, I forgot his name off the top of my head, but Chris Ariola, they allegedly scored a draw or whatever on PBC. I thought he beat Ariola and he was pissed at the post fight. A guy like that, he's coming off of a loss. Why not fight him? He at least gave Chris Ariola a good scrap and they were looking at making the Chris Ariola fight. And most people believe he was the true winner anyway, and he should have beat Ariola. So why not? You know what I'm saying? So to me, just fights like this, they don't really hold any meaning or merit. We all know his mandatory is Alexander Povetkin. Great fight. That's a really good fight. So to me, I told you guys, it worries me when I see a fighter and they have like, all of a sudden they have like a Leo Santa Cruz schedule. I'm not talking about Abnomatis. I'm talking about the two or three fights before Abnomatis was announced, or a guy like Deontay Wilder. Why it worries me is because I'm thinking, what is wrong? Like, do they feel this person isn't ready to defend against the bigger names? Because you look at guys like Tyson Fury, ready or not, he's the mandatory. He's fighting Klitschko. Klitschko's fighting his mandatory. But Deontay Wilder is not fighting his mandatory. Okay, cool. You have time. But in addition to not fighting your mandatory, you're fighting a guy that the world really doesn't know, Johan Duhapas. You know what I'm saying? Like, to be honest, I would rather see Chris Ariola. He didn't even look good in his last fight. But I'd rather see it because at least Americans know who he is. People know who Chris Ariola is. I know his pedigree because I've seen him in there with Klitschko. I've seen him there with Bermain Stavern two times. So to me, this, this just doesn't make sense. And it, it worries me. Is there something that they feel they have some kinks to get out? or he's not ready for the bigger fights. And another thing that bothers me too is we have an American heavyweight for the first time in a long time. It's been, we're far removed from the Rick Bowes and Mike Tyson era where we had a lot of American champions, Tommy Morrison and all those good guys. So this is almost historic because the Klitschko's have been killing everybody. And I don't think this is good practice for the winner of Klitschko Fury, or if Klitschko wins, I think Klitschko will beat Fury most likely. Actually, nah, I'll, I'll do another prediction on that, like an actual prediction, but I'm leaning towards Klitschko. Either way, this is not good preparation, beating a guy like Johan Duhapis, and that's why I think it robs the fighter. When you're taking all these soft touches and, and guys on paper you should really beat, you don't really have much to win from those situations because if the person shines and even wins a round or two and rocks you like Eric Molina, then people are like, damn, you struggle with this guy? You know what I'm saying? So you're better off just fighting better competition, in my opinion. And again, it just really, I keep I keep thinking, it really worries me, like why are they coaching and, and guiding certain fighters along slowly? I said the same thing for Canelo. 
before Austin Trout, when they were giving them guys who we thought were pretty much past it, the Baldemirs, the Centrons, the Mosleys, guys that were smaller like Josito Lopez, it makes me wonder because I got to see things. I'm a visual learner. I'm a visual person. I got to see these things. So if you're saying Canelo's the truth, let me see him in there, not with the Josito Lopez who never fought at 154. Let me see him in there with the killer. So Deontay Wilder, the Molina fight made sense coming off of the Bermain Stavern. I like that he's fighting actively, but for an American champion, heavyweight champion, I just feel we need a bit tougher schedule. Like I said, if you for whatever reason, the mandatory with Povetkin isn't going to happen. There's other great fights out there, like I named Amir Mansoor, Andy Ruiz. There's other great fights where you should probably be the favorite in all those fights, and it makes a bit more sense. But we're trying to get this whole primetime thing going and bring the luster back to the heavyweight division. So to me, fights like this, it's not really... I mean, I'll watch it because I cover boxing, but it's, it's not a fight that excites me. Let me know what you guys think. Make sure you like my video as always. Hate, comment, and subscribe. Till next video, it's Ego signing off.